All right, it's the fish one again. Skipping. This was really towards the end of the PlayStation 1 era of the official US PlayStation magazine. They would still cover PlayStation 1 games, but the... Because, you know, the games kept being released. Mostly sports titles, you know, football games, soccer games, that kind of thing. But the demo discs, at this point, had already switched over to having, like, one month PS1 demo disc, another month of PS2 demo disc, and then PS1 demo, going back and forth a few times. And a lot of the discs that were coming out actually had um, a lot of older games on it. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's because it was something that, like, they weren't getting the sort of advertiser revenue that you'd expect to out of sort of the distribution of these demo discs. So, they just sort of reused old ones just to have something to pack in the magazine to, you know, increase sales. So look at this. Uh, this is a PlayStation 1 demo disc, and the first thing to pop up is The Bouncer. The Bouncer is a PlayStation 2 game, a Square Soft game. I think it might have been the first game that Square had made for the PlayStation 2. And it was like a, like a Streets, of, Streets of Rage kind of thing. It's been a long time since I played this game, but I remember it not being especially difficult, and it wasn't that long. I mean, it wasn't a terrible game for its day, but it wasn't really anything truly special. You know, a freshman effort on the PlayStation 2, you're not going to expect, you know, a phenomenal effort. A lot of mixing of the pre-rendered graphics with the PlayStation 2's real-time, like, game. Unfortunately, this doesn't really quite do what the PlayStation 2 could do. It doesn't do it justice, because the video format we saw on the PlayStation 1 was sort of like a motion JPEG. Motion JPEG has the potential of being very, um, very high-quality video. In fact, I've used it, but... It, uh, it takes up a lot of space, so it's compressed, and it, I mean, the motion JPEG use on the PlayStation 1 was, uh, at times really good. Here, it's not really looking that good. <laughs> Red Faction, it's another PlayStation 2 game. This demo disc is just full of videos for PlayStation 2. Red Faction, though. This was my pick for the best first-person shooter of the PlayStation my, 2 generation until, you know, you started to see, like, the bloodshed to mankind. Halo games and, planet, the like, uh, the Call of Duties that came out towards the end of that generation. Far from Earth and its authorities. Red Faction had a gimmick which was pretty unique in its day. Which you was, I think they called it the Geomod technology that they're demoing it here. Miners where you have the, reality the is environment to be is deformable. You throw a grenade at a wall, it blows a hole in the wall, it blows a hole in the floor. Like, a surprising amount of that game, you are able to deform the geometry. And overall, I mean, as a first-person shooter, it was pretty good and had a decent enough story for a first-person shooter. It was a it was a good game for its day. I don't think the Red Faction sur series survived through the PlayStation 3 360 era. I think that's when it ended up dying. But I think maybe its problem might have been the big gimmick that it had, which is this um, modifiable like terrain became less unique with the next generation, which honestly would have done it in a much better way than we're seeing it done on the PlayStation 2. But for its day, Red Faction was a really good game. A lot of other people were more interested in the Time Splitters games, which were made by Free Radical, the, which was a dev team made up of former Rareware employees who developed um, GoldenEye 007 and uh, well, Perfect Dark was the other one. Then they left and formed 
uh, the team to go and make time splitters. So a lot of people were really excited about time splitters, and time splitters was a good game. But I feel like Red Faction was the better game. NBA Shootout 2001. Is this a video? It's another video. 989. Jeez, that 989. All over the damn place. At some point, 989 stopped producing uh, lots of other, like, multiple genres of games, and 989 really focused down on doing sports games. And now they are nothing. At least there's no studio called 989 anymore. It was clearly a Sony first party, but I don't... I don't know why it closed down. Maybe the sports titles weren't doing as good as they used to. See, here's the, the sad part. Oh, okay, so this is definitely a PlayStation 2 game, or at least it looks like it. I could be... I could be fooled by the fact that the JPEG compression, the video compression is so bad. I'm definitely looking at a PS2 game, though. And even though the PlayStation 2 ran at a low resolution in, in comparison to nowadays, it was definitely higher than what you could see in the PlayStation 1, so... You add low resolution to video compression, these games don't look as good as they could, or they should. NHL Faceoff 2001, another video, perhaps. <laughs> 989 again. Should have known. Here's the thing, though. Unless you have some truly unique thing you're putting into it, feature you're putting into the game, or it has truly exceptional graphics that are going to draw people's attention I don't really see much of a point to having a video for a sports title like this because it's oh oh they're playing hockey yeah they play hockey and all the other hockey games now of course this is a PlayStation 2 game so it does look better and that's probably why they're showing all of this to show the newfound shiny graphics you know, I withdraw my argument. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Not the guy into the penalty box. That was a little clunky. Available now. Oh, so the place. Oh, yeah, this is 2001, isn't it? Is it 2001? I mean, the year. Not the game. The year this disc was released. So the PlayStation 2 was out at the time. Of course the PlayStation 2 was out at the time. I started talking about how the um, they were switching back and forth between the discs. Ape Escape, this is an actual it's an actual game demo. I, I believe Ape Escape had seen a demo released in 1999 on the PlayStation 1, uh, one of these OPM discs, although I don't remember if I played it for the series or not. Um, maybe? You needed a dual shock for this game. This is one of the very few games on the PlayStation 1 which required a dual shock. That's because the game operates with sort of dual stick configuration where your character moves with one stick and your attacks are performed with the other stick. It's not for camera control. It is for aiming. Sort of in the way of like a dual stick shooter would operate nowadays. Good looking PlayStation 1 game. Weird kid with a lightsaber beating the piss out of monkeys. Oh. Well, that one kicked his ass. <laughs> Gonna lose all your cookies, bro. There you go. But yeah, it gives you freedom to move your character. Your aim is so much more free with this kind of setup. Of course, I never owned Ape Escape. I just played this demo a bunch of times. 
but not on this disc. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure what I was playing was the original release of this demo. Remember there was um, in Metal Gear Solid 3 there was an yes. Ape Escape tie-in. I guess this was a Konami game. Was that the end of it, or did we get tossed back into the hub world? Yeah, we're in the hub world. There's the hub world. I remember there was a... Let's see if I can find it. See if I can find it. No, no. Stop talking. How do I jump? Huh. There we go. R1 jumps. That's weird. The pocket station. Here it is. The pocket station... This is a pocket station to feed room here. The pocket station was a portable... Sony's first attempt at making a portable game system that was intended to stick into the memory card of the PlayStation 1. And it would operate like a memory card, but you could load information onto it from supporting games, which would then uh, allow you to play games on it. Now, it was... I never owned one, of course. It never came out in the U.S. I think it was a Japanese-only thing. Oh, he's got a Darth Maul saber. <laughs> Oh, he's helicoptering his way up. It never came out in the U.S., but... I don't know why it didn't, because I had read at one point that the delay... There was a delay of it coming out in the U.S. Because they were having a hard time manufacturing enough of them. So it's like, okay, you can't build enough of them. Oh, shit. You can't build enough of them, so then you go and you don't bother releasing it here. <laughs> It seems like you had something that you could have made a lot of money, but they didn't. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm not reading any of that. Game loads pretty quick, too. Looks good, loads quick. It's got a unique in its day, anyway, control scheme. Shame I didn't get into this at the time. Nope, oh, there's a regular memory card room. Alright. Let's get out of this. We went through the level, there's really nothing left to see. Come on now. Full Borders 2001. Oh, you know what? These are both advertised as PlayStation Classics. PlayStation Classics were a... I think they were green label games. I think they were green labels. Where they replaced the brown spine of the PlayStation 1 jewel cases, the CD cases, with a green one. It was green or red, I can't remember now. I think green. And the idea behind it was, it was something that Sony would... An opportunity that Sony had for developers to re-release games under the Greatest Hits label, but they could only do it if they made something like 500,000 sales. Or a million sales. I, I don't remember the numbers. And the games would be released at a budget price, allowing more sales to be picked up. Now, I, I imagine that the budget price was possible because Sony reduced its sort of um, reduced its royalty or whatever you call it when they when a, it's cut of the money when somebody releases a game on the PlayStation. So PlayStation 1 games had a habit of being around forty dollars. So of course after the game comes out the price does creep down. Once they hit the used market and stuff, and nobody's paying full price for an, a year-old game or whatever. So then, like, okay, so the game jumps down to $30, so it sits on the Funko Land shelves. Then, eh, well, you can re-release it on the Gate of Greatest Hits. All of those extra fees stripped out, you can make a few more dollars off of an old game. So that's what the Greatest Hits thing was. 
I know they did it in the PlayStation 2. I don't remember a PlayStation 3 version of Greatest Hits, but it might have existed. PlayStation 4. Physical sales were less of a thing in that generation. So perhaps there was none. Greatest Hits release, you know. Disney's Emperor's New Groove. Alright. There's no way this is a PlayStation Classic. <laughs> okay, this demo was in a previous disc, but it failed to load. So, I don't know if it's going to happen here or not. We're gonna go and see. Emperor's New Groove was a Disney movie. A Disney animated movie. Which had David Spade in it, and I think maybe John Goodman. David Spade and John Goodman. David Spade was a like a king or an emperor. Yeah, it was an emperor. It's right in the title. He was an emperor and he got turned into like a llama or some shit. And he had to rely on John Goodman's character, who was some kind of a like a peasant who he had abused earlier <laughs> to bring him back so he could be un unlamed. That's about all I remember out of this movie. It was not good. I'm not sure why I watched it. <laughs> this was definitely in the point in time where I was not really interested in watching Disney movies at all. So, why I ended up watching it, I don't know. It looks like it might load this time, though. Oh, nope, I was wrong. It looks like I might be looking at, like, palletized color data on the right side. Like, it just dumped something into the frame buffer in the from the wrong section of memory. And that's funny. Oh, look, do I see geometry? Anyway, I don't remember the game being any good either. I didn't own the game, but I did play the demo. And I probably paid, played it once and then turned it off in frustration. So let's get... Oh, there's music playing. Oh, no, it stopped. Alright, it's so buggy I can't back out, so I gotta reset the emulator. Nope, 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 never mind. Legend of Dragoon. Oh my god, another PlayStation Classic. Nothing but PlayStation Classics, I can imagine. I did not read the disc before I started. I usually don't, actually. I want to be surprised by the games that appear on this. Alright, so this is an RPG, a Japanese-style RPG. It may have been American-produced, though. But a Japanese-style RPG. And I never owned it. Although, I do rem have a friend I remember in high school was talking about how, uh, how he liked it. And I almost borrowed it from him, but at the time I was playing something else, and I didn't want to quit what I was doing in order to take on an RPG. So I, I turned him down, and then I never played it. <laughs> there was the demo, I played the demo. And I played it in a previous uh, episode of the series, the demo. And I don't know, maybe it maybe it had something to it, but I didn't really get that great of an understanding of the game from the demo. I mean, t removed by 20 years from its release. 21 years or so from its release. It's hard for me to appreciate what it may have been. But I mean, I do look at sort of like the graphics technology style that Square was using at the time. Where you have a static environment or semi-static environment. You got some motion for the water and the, the ocean and the birds and shit. And then you have 3D polygonal characters to operate on it. And I, you know, it is a... Oh, dude. That missed you, dude. What are you bitching about? <laughs> 3D characters that are running around on it and like you know this is a nice style actually I do in like both 
3D characters on 2D backgrounds or 3D backgrounds with 2D characters. But, uh, this doesn't look too bad. Here they come. Let's go. Oh. Now, I put a lot of time into the demo last time. I'm just going to get through one fight in this, and then I'm going to reset this back to the main menu, because I've already done this, uh, already done this demo, and it is a long one. Jeez, these weird gimps are chasing us down. <laughs> Woman first! Oh, it's a rabbit, or I don't know what the hell that... I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> Games like this definitely did, in a way, look better when rendered in the native PlayStation 1 resolution, in a sense. Because the 3D characters, when you have an emulator that's forcing a resolution increase and a rendering resolution increase, his hand is moving weird. You get this weird split between the way the characters look, which are rendered with low detail and all that because it's a PlayStation 1 game, but it is actually rendering at a high resolution. So they look crisp and clean. And the environment, on the other hand, must maintain the same resolution as originally envisioned or created because, well, it's a static asset. It's not being rendered actively. So, it kind of gets this ugly look to it. It's kind of cool when you see some of the, like, the Final Fantasy games on the PC, which go and, um, have mods made for them. Where people have gone and taken the 2D backgrounds and then fed them through some, um, AI image upscaling software. And that results in a better looking higher resolution background and it really does wonders especially in like Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9 I've seen it on the done on those it does have some drawbacks like it gets this kind of like painted texture across a lot of surfaces which looks awkward but overall I'd say it's a pretty substantial improvement alright we went through a fight dart Lavatus and Shanna. All right, let's get out. I don't know how many demos are on this. I don't want to spend a lot of time on Legend of Dragoon. Magic fish. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Oh my god. Didn't we have a Legacy of Cain video in the previous episode? Yeah, it was Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver 2, though. I think it was Soul Reaver 2. This game, I've actually been playing this recently because I was capturing footage for the sake of remaking a trailer that I had made some five, six years ago. At the time, I didn't put much thought into doing anything in HD. So the original trailer had low resolution video and all of that. But now thanks to upscaled uh, cinematics and the fact that it's playing the PC version, which renders at a higher resolution, even though it's got old school assets on it, PlayStation 1 kind of assets, made a better looking trailer Now here I am. Okay. This is not the demo that I remember initially playing, though. Because we're not in the right environment. The demo I remember involved Raziel swimming. Which is something he can't actually do until fairly late in the game. But he goes and he uh, swims out of that, then fights his way through a couple of the weaker vampires. Then you reach the end, and then that's the end. That's it. Alright, so I... 
I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Oh, there's a vampire. You attack things. Once they're staggered, you can stab. When you're stabbed, you have to hold circle and absorb their soul. Because if you don't, they'll eventually come back to life and try to kill you again. Now, if you don't, if you're not familiar with what the Soul Reaver series is, well, it's part of the Legacy of Cain series, which started on the PlayStation One and ended on the PlayStation Two, apparently. <laughs> It's about vampires and stuff. Raziel here was a vampire. Now he's some kind of uh, dispossessed soul. He doesn't drink blood anymore. He eats souls. This game was a real technical achievement in its day. Because it had a 3D environment like this. Now, it's not that big of a surprise in the PlayStation 1. There were a lot of games that had 3D environments. But the big deal about this was that once the game got going, there were no loading screens. The game just sort of streamed off the disc from one area to the other. And that was really something. All right, so this may be one of them things where I need to jump into the spectral realm in order to advance. So let's do that. I don't remember this demo at all. All right, let's try this. Not going to let me do it. There we go. I like how the, the stick got stuck in the air. Oh, see, there you go. That's it. A lot of the puzzles involve you having to jump between the physical realm and the spectral realm. Because in scene geometry changes depending on what you uh, depending on which one you're in. So I jumped into the spectral realm and then all of these pillars shortened, allowing me to platform over. And then I absorb a soul and jump back into the material realm, and I can continue on. I probably actually could have continued on in the spectral realm. Oh, shit. What am I supposed to do with this? Is this the one where I stick the reaver into it? I don't have the reaver. Where is it? Or... Is there another? Stupid me, I'm lost. <laughs> burn! Burn! <laughs> but anyway, this is Soul Reaver. It's a shame I can't really demonstrate how good the game actually is. It is dated, of course. But it is, uh... Is really something. Look at that. It's actually, it's got vertex-based animations on the character here. Not that common on the PlayStation 1. Look at his, uh, you can really see it on the wings dangling off, dangling off of his back. Okay, jumping out. This was a sequel. Nay, hey, look, no load times. It's listed on the it's listed on the features. Loading when you started the game, but not once you jumped into it. It even had a fast travel system of sorts that you didn't see a loading screen. There are doors that Rezael has to walk through that probably exist only to slow your progression down enough to allow the game to load. But, uh, no true loading screens. Oh, whoa, jeez. <laughs> it's showing us stills from the opening cinematic. Come on now. Medieval 2, another demo from a previous episode. I'll play it for a bit. Not gonna play this a lot. 
Medieval was a series, in case you don't know, Medieval was a sort of 3D platformer, action platformer series. Didn't really go on all that long, but it was a PlayStation 1 thing. You play as a an deceased knight. Surprisingly good looking game, again, for the PlayStation 1. I'd say it actually it's, looks better than Soul Reaver in ways. It's more colorful, but I think it has loading screens. <laughs> More cartoony. A lot more humor involved in this series than Legacy of Cain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to hear you, Casper the Top Hat Ghost. Well, things have changed since you've been away. It's a new world, but with the same old problems. So find yourself a weapon and get ready for a scrap. Oh, and if you see my spectral trail, stand in the light and press action to summon me. Won't be doing that. It's a goofy little game here. Yep. Attack, there we go. X attacks. Take the sword, damn it. There we go. Goofy little game with a sense of humor to it. I'd say the... It sort of looks kind of like what the Gex games were. On the PlayStation 1. Like, if you had swap out... Daniel Fjordeskew for Gex and then had Gex run around in here quipping about TV shows or whatever the fuck. It'd be right at home. I'm not gonna bother doing this right. A little chaotic, the control you run around doing all that kind of shit. Maybe there aren't loading screens. Well, maybe more... Well, this was a... This was a uh, first party game. I guess once developers really got the hang of the PlayStation 1, you didn't have to do as much loading. Looking at the tech specs of the PlayStation 1 and understanding the way it, it works better than I did at the time, I'd say that it must have taken a lot of effort to... Uh... Oh shit, he's dead. <laughs> a lot of effort to get games to not have long loading screens. Coming soon. Should have been out by now. Available now. Yeah. <laughs> Coming soon. Available now! Alright, I get it. Metal Gear Solid. Oh, yeah. This demo I played endlessly, not on this disc, off of the original disc that came in, whatever issue that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know if I ever even bothered playing it off of this disc, because I owned the game by this point. Metal Gear Solid had come out in 1998. And that's when I got it, and it was great. I speak in Japanese. <laughs> Demos exactly like the previous one. But by the time I got this disc, I already owned Metal Gear Solid, and I would beaten it numerous times. Why go back and play a demo that I had also beaten numerous times, that was available on a different disc, and... I already beat. Ah, you fucker. <laughs> Come here. Don't kick him. I'm gonna die. Snake, you're not doing a good job. <laughs> That is actually pretty representative of what happened the first time I played Metal Gear Solid. I ran up there, punched the dude, 
thinking that that would get me a gun and it didn't and I died. <laughs> But yeah, that was, uh, never, pro probably I put this disc in, rolled through all the videos, skipped over this one, skipped over this one, skipped over this one, skipped over this one, skipped over that one, probably because I'd played all of those demos before. Siphon Filter 2. The only Siphon Filter game I had actually played the proper game. Siphon Filter, why, well, that's not true. Later on, I picked up the other ones. Okay, so, Siphon Filter, a 989 again. I played the demo of the first one. I had actually borrowed the second one, and over a couple of days, I, I bought it from a, a second cousin. And the game was kind of difficult. Games were back then. 1999, bro. Yeah, this is the this is the old demo. It's about time you checked in. It's another pretty good looking PlayStation One game, and he dies. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was not intentional. Are you there? That was not intentional. It doesn't play well at all. In fact, I had a real hard time wrapping my head around how to do anything. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to shoot. There we go. Square. L1 to aim. Square to shoot. Open fire! Oh. Once you get the hang of it, though... Ah, oh, I'm out of ammo. You got another gun there, bro? I don't know how to switch guns. Select. There we go. No! Turn around, loser. <laughs> Don't roll. Ah! You moron. <laughs> Gabe, are you there? Leon. Good job. Turn around. <laughs> Don't waste your ammo. Okay, maybe I shouldn't try aiming. Maybe you'll auto-aim. But I did beat Siphon Filter 2. Okay, so yeah, auto-aim does work, and I must use it. <laughs> Although, I'm not going to. Let's get out of this. It's clear that there are a lot of demos on this disc, if they're just recycling a lot of old ones. Things that are on the greatest hits list now. Yep. Tekken 3! Oh, yeah! Tekken 3 may be the best fighting game on the PlayStation 1. I don't know, maybe uh, Soul Edge might have been better. I didn't play Soul Edge until years later, and I wasn't in a position by that point to appreciate what it was. Tekken 3, though, I swear Tekken 3 is still a great game. Although this Tekken 3 came out well before 2001. Round 1. Fight! Uh. Tekken games were definitely arcade games primarily, but the hardware of the arcade cabinets was very PlayStation-esque. I'm pretty sure it actually was the PlayStation hardware, but with solid-state memory for instead of a disk drive. And it might have had more memory, or operated faster, or something like that. But eh, the point being, though, that it opened up the possibility of... Ports PlayStation consoles being a lot easier, which is why the Tekken ports, the PlayStation, were so good.
you just downgrade assets or something like that, and then you can uh, port it to the PlayStation. Failed to touch clunky, not quite as responsive as I would have liked. But, I mean, it is a 20-something-year-old game. You gotta give it some credit for that. The Bouncer. Okay, we're back to where we started. So, 40 minutes. 40 minutes of video and games. Honestly, it's got some good stuff on there. I'm sure at the time... At the time, uh, Cool Borders was good. Legend of Dragoon was good. Soul Reaver was good. Medieval 2 was good. Metal Gear Solid was great. Siphon Filter 2 was good. Tekken 3 was good. And then some videos about the PlayStation 2 to get really excited about. But the problem is if you had already played these games or if you had the demo discs that they originally came out on, you're not going to be too excited about playing old demos. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. It's a pretty good disc, just...